So YouTube, um, starting and growing your office YouTube channel. Whose offices have YouTubes? Okay, only, only a few here. Those that don't have YouTube, it's probably because it's a pain, isn't it? Like to record, you can't get your doctor to record any videos. Does that sound, sound right? Yeah, the doctor is uh, self-conscious and things like that. Okay, so I'm going to talk about a few things. I'm going to show kind of my methods of how I do it. I am not making as much as, you know, Dr. Schneider, things like that. I may, may, maybe make $200 a month. But I want to explain a, a, a reason maybe why your practice should have at least a few videos up there. Okay, so we're going to talk about justifying this as a channel how to get out of perfectionism of, of making videos. Do, is, there a, is there a battery for this? Should be plugged in. Oh, looks like this got hit. I'll just move this over here. So how to make sucky, how to make sucky videos a little bit better? <laughs> how to get good audio? How to fit video making into an already busy practice? And how to share videos easily with your patients? And how to use videos to save you tons of time? The one reason that I do, I'm not interested in being a YouTube star, okay? I don't have the, I have the voice for it, I don't have the face for it. Um, the only thing I want videos to do is to save me time. When I started out, that's the only reason why. Because when I explain my spiel on plantar fasciitis, it takes me five or 10 minutes. And if I put this on my, on my website, if I send it out to the email, to email it to the patients before, right? I'm positioning myself. If I do a webinar on it, I'm positioning myself. So it saves me tons of time. That's the main reason. And today, no one likes to read stuff. Like I write stuff out, but no one reads it. They, they, they want this. So this is for you if you, know, if you want to start with a YouTube, you don't know how. We understand why. I'm going to teach you about who you can use, different who's. Who's are like delegations and stuff like that. I'll give you the tools. And I have a little cute thing about chat GPT, which is kind of in the trend now of how to make content. Um, so I'm going to give you, I put together a cheat sheet. I'm going to give you access at the end here. Okay. So the questions and concerns, I don't have time. My videos will suck. No one makes money on YouTube videos. And my practice doesn't need a YouTube video. So those are the main concerns and objections. So Find an easy way to justify YouTube immediately. So this is the main key, okay? The main key is you want to educate your content for your, your current patients. And I also use it to explain about procedures. And the cool thing is I make videos and then I give them to my staff. Have you ever thought about that for staff training? So what we do is, because I don't know if about you, but we're having a lot of turnover, okay? <laughs> And I don't think anyone else is in the same boat. And, and what I said to them is I, I'm like, you know, you're explaining this a lot lately. Would you mind just recording a video on like you teaching this? You know why? It's really to your benefit because you're it taking you so much time. And, and when you're in the busy, you don't have time to train. And so I asked them to record a video of them showing how to put on an unaboot, showing how to prep for a perinicia, showing them how to prep for a matrixectomy. You know, they're doing this video of us doing the procedure so they can show how the doctor, so you can just do all these things once and that's it. And then you put it, you don't have to put it on even YouTube. Just take the recording and put it on your hard drive somewhere and they can have access to it. You can put it on YouTube and leave it unlisted if you don't, if it's not professional enough. You can leave it unlisted so no one has access to it. But when you're doing your training manual, you have the new, new assistants that are coming in, and you're like, okay, we do these, I don't know, 20 procedures in the office, flexor tenotomy, matrixectomy, putting on a unaboot, collagen, and we made little videos for you to see how the doctor, how you do all of these things. Okay, and then also, we made little explanations of how you open with sterile technique. We made little videos of how you put on an unaboot, how you size for diabetic shoes, how you, you know, dispense orthotics, all these things. These all can be little videos. Put them up on YouTube, YouTube put them as un, unlisted. The cool thing about unlisted is they're unlisted for everyone, but you can then share them with patients if they're like not super high, you know, high. You can send them with, share them with staff on your, on your staff training thing, put little hyperlinks to these YouTube videos, and it's all stored there like forever, okay? So I would just consider making little videos. It's really easy, you just get a YouTube account and Upload, upload stuff. Don't worry about thumbnails, stuff like that, okay? 
So um, this was my first one that I ever did. Was remember that patient presentation I did like uh, before about um, pre-surgical discussion? I did the first one, how to prepare for foot surgery. Okay, and that was that was the presentation. It's real easy. I just do a, a full screen. I show the screen, and then I do it on Zoom. So I pull up Zoom. I do full screen. Hit the record button, and and it records me. And I do a little talking. You know, I'm not all about like, hey, here I. You know, I don't do the green screen thing that that often. You know, I do mostly just a presentation, and I'm teaching because that's what we do as doctors. So it might be easier for your doctor to do a, a, a screen share presentation. They make a PowerPoint, or better yet, you use my, steal my presentations, okay, you're allowed, and just have the doctor talk through those. They have none of my logos on them. That's why I made them perfectly for that. So, you, like, it's not, I don't want to be one of those guys that does that, you know, all my logo stuff. No, it's all, it's all about you, okay? Um, okay. So, unlisted, it doesn't matter if it sucks. Okay, unlisted doesn't matter that it sucks. You're using it for in-office training and you're using it just for your patients. So the patients don't care if it sucks. Why? Because you're gonna be doing the presentation. How, you know, even if you don't even do slides, have the doctor with a patient and this is the way you do it. Your doctors are great in the treatment room, aren't they? Aren't they? Yeah. If, if not, yeah, you, I don't know, they suck. No, yeah, they have to be great. They're great. Like, they are word smiths, aren't they? They're like, they know how to say it, and every patient gets the orthotics. Let me just give you a little simple thing. Say, you know, doctor, I know you don't want to make videos. Would you mind? You know, we're not going to show the patient here, so you're standing where the patient is. Do you mind if I just, I know it's going to feel awkward, but just, just let me record this for our staff training purposes of how you explain plantar fasciitis. Huh. Then they don't have to be in front of a, a camera. They don't have to be worried. They're already doing their best presentation. I have a colleague. He is the world best world wordsmith, okay? When he talks to patients, he's excellent. But when I put him on Zoom, he's like, uh, he, doesn't, you know, he doesn't know how to do it. Like, there's no, there's no, so you don't. You just say doctor. And, and you don't need consent from the patient because they're not showing up. Can I just record you how you do that matrixectomy or how you do that thingy? If it sucks, I'll delete it. Oh, what happens? You know, what about my hair? If it sucks, I'll delete it. Just let me, let's try one. Just try one, doc. And then you're going to get a spiel. That's going to be good. And then what you can do is you can put it on the unlisted if you want, because you probably won't want it. Unlisted, or if it's better, you can put it on the actual website for when patients are going to come in for plantar fasciitis. Here, this is a, a patient, ex this is like a patient example of what's going to happen to you when you come here. Wow, that's what patients want to know. What's it going to be like when I come to see Dr. Jones? It's going to be like this. This is exactly the same condition. So you take your top six conditions that you do, the money maker, your called largest check, the stuff that makes you the money, and you, and you, and you, and you take a video of it. Could be, hey, you're going to talk about shockwave. Can I just record this? You're going to, whatever it is, okay? Making it easier for you? Take a cell phone, just a cell phone. You know? Doesn't have to be in front of Zoom, doesn't have to be anywhere else. Okay? Now, if you're wanting to do YouTube, I would just recommend publishing one video per week. Okay? Now, I'm all about block timing. You know what block timing is? Like you do all the stuff you don't want to do just once. <laughs> That's what block timing is. So what you, what you do is you, if you want to take my presentation, you just take all those and you do four of them at once. Or you don't have to do four. You could just take one presentation and just do one slide of the presentation. Or make your own presentation. I don't care. But you want to do just one in, in, in short videos, just kind of talking. Okay, that's kind of phase one is doing kind of one video per week if you want to get anywhere, if you want to kind of grow your YouTube and things like that. Now, I'm a big advocate, as you heard before, repurpose this. If you take the work to record the doctor, you want to repurpose it. What is that? What is repurposing? Well, we're talking about YouTube. Where are the other places that you can put video? On your website? Can you maybe put a link in the, in the patient newsletter? Right? Can you maybe send it out before patients come into the office with plantar fasciitis? Hey, you're coming for plantar fasciitis? I want to send you this video. It's going to talk about shockwave and orthotics and all these other great things. That's called positioning. Okay? And could you also put it maybe on social media? 
you know, on Snapchat, you know, could you, and I'm not going to get into the details of cutting up little pieces there. You can do all that, but I don't want to go into the details of that, but just take the darn thing and put it on, on Facebook, <laughs> you know, put it other places. Focus on the basics. So you want to get good audio. So my recommendation is Dr. Jones, I know you're kind of concerned and I don't want to get crappy out of, so I'm going to put this little lapel mic on you when you're treating this patient. That's how you're going to get the audio while they're treating in the treatment room, okay? 30 bucks on Amazon, on my little cheat sheet, you can get it, okay? Use your phone, just use your phone. That's it, you don't need more than that. And then you can use like a tripod. I'll show you what I do in my office or however you wanna do it, okay? Is this sounding feasible? Just recording a doctor when he talks. He's really good, he or she, they're really good. Another idea. Who does like weekly or monthly staff training meetings? repurpose content did you ever like have this great training meeting that you're like man we should have recorded this we talked about phone call training or we talked about these other things if if every meeting if every meeting you record let's say you do 12 a year and then new people come in, you would categorize it according to what they're going to learn. Hey, you know, we're going to talk about phone training. Can I, what can I review? You review the video that you got on phone training. It's going to make it so much. I hate repeating things. Like when I train my scribe, I recorded my training. And then if I, my scribe leaves, I have the same training to train the next scribe. So you can, don't do things just once. You want to, that's why it's so important to record things so you don't have to keep doing it again. Um, sharing videos with patients. Oh, that, there it is. So add to your website, send out before and after. So what we use is my favorite thing. It's a it's a hundred dollars per month. It's called Patient Education Genius. I don't get paid for them yet. Maybe I will later. But um, it's my favorite thing. Patient calls in, plantar fasciitis. You say, Mrs. Jones, you know, I'd like to share a few things about our practice before you come in on your heel pain. Why? Well, because their appointment's six weeks out, right? Who's booking out a lot of weeks, right? A lot of weeks. What do they do? Book out six weeks. What are they doing? They're just waiting. And then what are they doing? They're searching the internet. They got heel pain. Not going to be four weeks, even two weeks. What about you if you were a patient? And you're going to go see a doctor for something you're concerned with. I had this ear thing with the itching ear thing that just would never go away. And so I had to make a doctor, you know, to see the ear, whatever the ear doctors are called. And, uh, and they just gave me some drops. But, like, if he would have said, you know, I got some stuff to send you about itchy ears, and we're all, you know what we're all worried about? I remember I used to do some videos. I taught, I did ingrown toenail video. I taught people how to do them. You know what the colleagues in my city said? Done! Everyone's going to treat their own ingrown toenails. The, the primary cares, the urgent cares, they're going to watch your video and they're going to learn. But they're not going to do that. You can give them the information and then you're going to be the expert. They're not going to treat their own plantar fasciitis, ingrown toenail. They might try, but it's not going to work. Okay, so if you give them information before, what's it going to do? It's going to position you. Position your practice like you're the best. Wow, he knows what he's talking about. I can't wait. And what happens is when they come in, my favorite patients are the ones that have spent an hour watching all my YouTube videos on plantar fasciitis. They come in and say, Doc, I need orthotics and that shockwave thing. <laughs> okay, let's get you set up. That's called positioning. You don't have to sell anything when you're positioned well. I went to my other doctor. They gave me three cortisones. They got me, you know, these prefab orthotics. They come to me. I watched your video. I need that shockwave and that amnio thing and the ultrasound thing and real orthotics. It's positioning, okay? Now, my other thing, make webinars. Okay, so we did these series. Now, it was like pulling teeth to get my colleagues on a webinar, okay? I got, I got three other partners and, and they're like, Don, not a, not, a, not a Don idea again. That's what they say, not a Don idea. And, uh, and so what I did is we made, a, we made a Google PowerPoint, Google Slides, and I divided it up amongst the doctors. And there's one doctor that really loves surgery, so he did the surgical component. I had another doctor that did other things. And so we did these webinars. We did 
it was like quarterly. Every three months we did a webinar, okay? So we sent it out to our list. We had like 90 people on a webinar, live. We recorded it. It's on our website. Mrs. Jones, you're coming in. We got an hour of content that you can listen to before you come in to see us to meet all the doctors. It's right there. It's a webinar. All the doctors. We did it once. I can't get them to do it again. I'm trying to. Like my, the idea in my mind, if one thing works, I want to do a lot of it. So I had like 12 webinars once a month, for, you know. But they're like, I couldn't get them to do it. So anyway, so we have the recorded webinars. And even better yet, you take the webinars and you email them to the patients before they come in. If you can do it automated, even better. And you send out these videos with all of your marketing material. Okay, how do I find time to do this? Well, the problem now that I have a scribe is now I have extra time. <laughs> and because uh, I, I used to be always doing notes and now I'm like doing all this other stuff like this. So I'm sorry this looks really, really uh, messy, but this is how I record. I do not have a green screen. Like where my, ma where my magazines are behind my back, it's like that foot and ankle surgery, so it kind of looks like I'm a surgeon, so it has that magazine that shows up kind of on purpose accidentally, okay? And, uh, and so what you'll see here are the most important things. This is called a ring light. This is my, 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 my thingy that I record with. This is my blue microphone. Here's my coffee cup. Here's my, so here is me recording with the zoom open. And then here are, I don't know, I just put other stuff over here. So this is how I record. It's, pre, it's pretty easy. You know, and, and I have a small office. There's two people in this office, and it's like a shoebox. And the problem is when the other doctor's in there because they get upset because they can't make any phone calls or anything else like that, and, and they're usually showing up in my videos and, and things like that. But this is all I do. That's it. That's not high tech. It's low tech. So I, I, I power up Zoom, and I hit the record button, and I hit the full screen thing, now, what I do is I, and I, I do it a little bit different now. I, I record to the cloud. You can either record to your computer or you can record to the cloud. I record to the cloud. It takes that, that, that linky thing and I send it. I have a virtual assistant now that helps me. And then they, they like download it and do the stuff that they do now. I don't do that stuff. But I used to do that stuff, but I was really bad at that stuff. So I get rid of the stuff I'm really bad at and I try to do more of the stuff I'm, I'm okay at. So Friday time, I use my lunch hour. Okay, so I have, you know, usually end up with about a half hour lunch for 45 minutes. And the key is knowing what you're going to record before you start to record. Because if you don't know what you're going to record, you're not going to, you're going to like think about what you're going to record. Okay, so I um, have everything you need in place. Okay, duplicates. So this is another thing I do. I'm a big advocate of spending money, okay, to save time. So I have a, a microphone here. I have a microphone at home. I have a microphone at the other, other office. I have, you know, this here. I have it somewhere else. I have other, other places. And I use Zoom, I don't use my cell phone, but they're wanting you to do it like in two angles. This is transverse, so I use my cell phone and I put it on the vertical and it's, it's kind of beyond this. Um, I use Google Slides and so the way I do Google Slides is Google Slides is my, now my repository for ideas. So the way I think about it is this. When I'm treating patients, I get like tons of ideas a day. Okay, I'm like an idea and it drives my, my staff absolutely nuts. And, uh, but when I'm there, every computer is logged in with my Gmail account. So let me explain why that's important. It's because all of the, the, the bookmarks I have in one computer are in like all six, all 12 treatment rooms, six in each office and in my computer. So I'm in there with a the patient. I got a good idea because that's where you get your best ideas is patients asking me questions. So whenever they ask you a question, everything they ask us a question about, we should like make a video on. And so then I just pull up my Google Slides, I, I type in that question there. You can do it anyway, you can email yourself, you can write it on a piece of paper, you can use your cell phone, however you want it, you have to think of ideas. And then based on those ideas, that's what I put in here. So I put it in Google Slides and I, the content's ready. And then I had to do this just to, to make, a, make a something that says do not interrupt. Because as I was recording, and I don't like to repeat things, so as I was recording, like my, my staff comes in there <laughs> and they like bomb me. Because they don't know that I'm recording. Because you know, sometimes I'm talking to myself. So, yeah, the microphone's nice, so it's a little bad, but how bad is just like a laptop microphone? Horrible. Really? Horrible. So, what, I don't use this one anymore. Oh, look at this. This is it right here. 
this little cell phone box is kind of I bought the cheap one don't buy the cheap one like me there's a little lapel mics that are USB that plug into your iPhone and um, and there are you Bluetooth it's called Bluetooth yeah the Bluetooth thing so you turn it on and it's perfect and so I, I, I tend to use this one now like so if you're if you're in the treatment room explaining to put that on the doctor this one this one's easier than I have a lot of I spend a lot of money on stuff so questions you gotta get the, the Bluetooth the Bluetooth the 30 bucks I'll buy it for you. I'll send it to you. As long as you're going to use it. If you use it and make a video, I'd buy it for you. Okay. How do you find ideas? Pictures of patient encounters. That's where I get most of mine. So we take pictures of everything in the office. I'm like, that's gross. I'm like, okay, that'll be a good picture. Okay. Um, we use something called Athena Capture, and we remove patient identifiers, and you kind of have to get consent and things like that. Chat GPT, we're going to go over that. Subscribe to other emails. Like, it's great. Everyone, everyone at this group here, they have a lot of. So you're just kind of, um, what do you call it? What's called? modeling? You model like if if, if Andy has a, has a good blog post or email, I'll just like kind of take the idea from it and I'll just make my own. Okay. Um, you can also use. I'm like an organization person. You can use Trello. That's kind of a cool one. Google Slides. Or just a regular plain notebook. Check out other YouTube thingies. How so? People like. Like they like clickbait. That's what they like in terms of the titles. Okay, common mistakes, common misconceptions, common myths, the truth about. Okay, that's what they that's what they like. Patient questions when they ask you. If you want to learn more about this, you just look at Dan Kennedy's stuff. He's got a lot of marketing stuff that he talks about. Um, I do it a little bit more now, where I use there's something called tr tr transcript. No, what's it called? Um, teleprompter. It's called teleprompter. It's an app. So it links to my Google Google Notes or Google Word, Google Google Docs, and I type stuff in there, and I can use a, a, a teleprompter now on my cell phone. So it's it's even getting kind of so I'm, I'm actually like I'm actually thinking a little bit more about it versus going ad lib. Up till now I've been kind of doing ad lib, and now I'm kind of you know documenting out a little bit more what I wanna what I wanna talk about. So here's how you can do. I gave you some prompts in this as well. You can get the slides for Chat GPT. So what I did is I put in content, content types, and then content ideas. So actionable things. So I put in like my time, top five things I like to see. So shockwave, orthotics, AFO, plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendonitis. So actionable things, mastering shockwave treatments, a step-by-step -step guide. Ooh, that sounds cool. Optimizing ankle foot orthotics for patient comfort. Defining a definitive guide to treating plantar fasciitis step-by-step. So anyway, this is what ChatGPT made me, and you can get my prompts right here. So with ChatGPT, if you have a cool prompt, you can just copy it and you can share that link and anyone else can use your prompts. Here's some other ones. So uh, this was talking about ultra-specific guides. This is called inspirational stories. So success stories, podiatrists who've transformed lives with EPAT. Orthotic success stories, changing patients' lives. Triumph over orthotic challenges. Um, Contrarian views, debunking the myths about EPAT, orthotics, when customization isn't always necessary, any things like that, hidden trends, stuff like that. Um, we're going to kind of close to finishing up here. Um, how to find who's to do the sucky stuff that you don't like to do or that you're no good at. Um, editing, thumbnails, and uploading. You can try to use text savvy staff. My staff are like already overworked. Like some of them say they want to do some night stuff, but they really don't. Even if I'm willing to pay them cash, they're just not interested. So a couple of things. Fiber, fancy hands, curing busy. Currently, I'm using curing busy. You have to try them out. These are just different people. You pay them. I pay mine. Um, so they give me 10 hours per week. Okay? And it's 10 hours. So they have two, two or three people that do different things. And they kind of just divide it amongst themselves. I send them stuff. And then they send me stuff back. And that's how it works. And so they charge me $15 an hour. And the nice thing is, is like I don't have to find staff or they're not going to leave me. And there's no benefits. So those are kind of added benefits. So it's $150 a week. And then you can just total it up. That's not that much. It's just the stuff I don't like. Like if this stuff takes me an hour or less than an hour, it's way, way worth it. So delegate everything but your genius. So thumbnails, uploading, naming and descripting, describing, sorry, posting and scheduling posts, sending out emails. So I have a couple of different scribe people. I have one that helps me with podiatry practice mastery that does the posts, they do the YouTube, they do everything. And I have another group from Brazil that does my stuff for my Dr. Pelto and they do like do thumbnails and they do other stuff like that. 
So. Um, so conclusion, these are all links to the slides if you want to get all the slides. These are all my three lectures today. And then all of them have these under these little li lines, and those lines are clickable. They're clickable lines. So you just click the line, and it'll give you my cheat sheet. So start recording. Find someone to do all the stuff you don't like, and make it easy to fit in your, in your daily routine. Questions for me? YouTube. No questions. Come on. Who, now, I think the best thing I told you today, I, I, I can be, is like, take the doctor and just record them. That's the best thing. Like, they're never going to, most 90% 90, 90 of doctors aren't going to like, hey, I'm Dr. Pelt. I'm going to show you this. They're not going to do that. But they're really good in the office. And, and don't do it with a mock patient. Let me just tell you that. You know why? Because there's no money in it for them. Like, there's no, like, it's, it's not worth it. You got to get, uh, like, get, like my, my doctors love to treat, like, high-end ultra marathoners. Like, if I get him with an ultra marathoner, he's going like, to be on, and I'll just record that. Okay? I'll try, if you can do one thing, just do that. Record them with one patient. See how it goes. Okay? Thank you. Thank you.